Exodus chapter 12. Amen. Exodus chapter 12. Chapter 12, verse 12 and 13. Amen. Hope y'all got it. The Bible says, for I will pass through, who? God. I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. This is Passover. This is God's last and final one. Time for to get to Pharaoh. Amen. He said, I'm going I'm to smite the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. In other words, why? Because I'm the Lord. I don't have to answer to nobody. Amen. I do what I want to do. Amen. And the blood shall be the blood of that that goat or all that sheep rather the blood of the sheep should be a token upon the houses where you are that lamb that blood of that lamb is going to be your token upon the houses where you are God said when I see the blood certain things that God don't see certain things he do knows he didn't say when I see your house when I see your son when I see, he said, when I see the blood. He said, when I come through, I'm looking for one thing. He said, when I pass through your house, I'm looking for one. I don't care about your furniture. I don't care about your new dining, dinette set. Your new bunk bed set for your children. I ain't care about your flat screen and your DVR. I'm looking for the blood. I'm not looking at your trophies on the wall, your accolades. <laughs> when I come through your house, I'm looking for one thing. I'm looking for the blood. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be up on you. To destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Simple thought tonight, and I'm going to be brief tonight. Keep the blood on your house. Keep the blood over your house. And your, your natural house, and when I say your house, your family. Cover your family with the blood. Oh, y'all hear me. Amen. If you're a man of your house, you cover your family with the blood. Wife of your house, you cover your family with the blood. Come on. You got to cover yourself. You can't walk out without it. Because when, 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 when destruction comes, God said, I'm looking for one thing. I'm looking for the blood. We cannot live casual lives as if we are exempt from the deadly diseases. That is moving from China into nations, even into America. Yeah, we, you know, we, we, we can't act like we, we, we invincible. We can keep living like we want to, loose how we want to live, loose in one day, out one day. Listen, it's time to cover yourself by the blood. It's time to be so united to God, to any. There's nothing that can pass you that will destroy you if it wasn't for the blood. Oh, y'all hear me? Y'all come on here. Let me tell you what God is looking for. He's looking for some consistent life. You know, we up one day, we're down the next. Listen, what's that consistency? He said, when I pass by, I want to see the blood. Amen. One of the reasons why we ain't sick in here from that stuff, because the blood. One of the reasons it might not come to my city. Because I put the blood over the city. Brothers and sisters, more, y'all listen to me, more than 90,000 cases of the coronavirus has been confirmed worldwide. 
and the number of deaths from the coronavirus has reached 31, I mean, 3,110 globally. And nine people in the United States has died from the disease. It has found its way over here now. And it is spreading. And you know what I hear the Lord saying to me? You can't count on the blood being over my house to protect you. Y'all quiet. I'm connected to the pastor. They don't, y'all listen to me. You can't count the blood that's on my shop by. You can't count the blood on my doorpost to protect your doorpost. You better get a relationship with the blood and when you call on the blood of Jesus, it covers your own house. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? They couldn't count on their neighbors. The blood of the lamb being on their doorpost. They have to have it on their own. I got to cover, listen, the blood of my doorpost ain't going to cover your children. You got to take the initiative to cover that house with the blood. Lord, while we sleeping. I cover my home. Cover my children, my grandchildren. And those that don't know God, I cover them by your blood. Lord, just see if you will have mercy. I know you say, when you see the blood, you'll pass by. But if you could just this time. Because I know ain't no blood on their lives because they just live in any kind of way. And so they're only living by the mercy of the prayers of the saints. Y'all better have, y'all better hear me tonight. This stuff, this came out of China. And found its way to all the other countries and leaked over right over into America. And 31, 3,110 global deaths and nine people in the county has died in the United States. And so many is infected by it. Oh, y'all wish, listen to me. Brothers and sisters of federal health official warned that the virus would eventually start spreading in U.S. communities. Y'all, this is, this is something taking folks out. This is taking people out. They woke up one day not expecting to die. They're being taken from their family because they can spread it to other folks. So they're being quarantined. They got to be put away. And if you are, for example, took a trip to China, and you got that disease, you ain't coming home. You stand right there. Wherever you live, you stand right there. If you have that disease. Brothers and sisters, let me tell y'all something. You don't know who you're walking across with, what they have. And you could be next to somebody that has it. And you got the blood on you. That thing on them. Got the he said, because when I see the blood. Oh, God, when I got a relationship with the blood, it's got to pass. They might come and investigate you and say, this person was in contact with you. And everybody they was in contact with was infected by this, but you. Can you, what? I don't understand what, I understand, sir. I, I, but I don't understand how it worked, but I know what worked. I was covered by the blood, baby. Come on, somebody. It's one person, one person said they thought was cleared from it. Sent them home and infected other folks. Y'all, Wash, in Washington right now, six people died in Washington. So many people died in Seattle. Y'all better hear me. It's about to spread. Let me tell you why it's for the spread. Because they have no answers for it right now. The U.S. don't have the proper tools and medicine. Amen. And so I'm telling y'all tonight, and I just feel like to talk to tell y'all about this. Cover yourself before you leave home. Cover your children. Because Lord help us that if that uh, flu get on one of these kids, they ain't going to, Lord, they ain't going to make it without prayer. 
Little infants. It's killing grown folk. Y'all hear me here? It's killing grown folk. It's beyond. That's beyond. Yeah, this is like pneumonia. It's it's a pneumonia plus. Are y'all hearing me? And so let me tell you the symptoms of a corona coronavirus infections range in severity from respiratory problems to cases of pneumonia, kidney failure, and build up of fluid in the lungs. This is something everybody. Let me tell you what's happening now. I'm going to tell you what I feel in the, in, the, in, the, in the spirit out there in the world. Panic. It's a fear in the world. This, yeah, this epidemic now is fearing people. What about me? And so they running, trying to take cover. They want to try to see, what, well, how can I protect myself? And folks are afraid to travel. Let me tell you something. When God called me out to travel, I'm traveling. Now, what, I'm going to tell you what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to be foolish and take it lightly because the Bible said be sober and vigilant. So you don't take things for granted, but you don't go in free either. Oh, I yeah, better hear my toe first lady. When I, when I go through the airport, when we go through, we wearing no masks on our face. Come on, we, we wearing masks. If I touch, if I, listen, you want to shake my hand? Before we push, to reach for take my, hold on. Put my glove on. Then I'll say, don't get offended. <laughs> Let me put my glove on before I shake you. <laughs> Y'all, you don't know how far the spirit has taken this disease. And I'm bringing this up because it is killing people. And if you are not covered, and let me tell you something else. It's other stuff coming on this land. It's some stuff for to hit this earth. If God, if he delay is coming, we are going to have to deal with the debris of the full thing that's about to come. And y'all, we can't be playing with this stuff. We can't be playing with God. Let's stop half-stepping. Let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. I know you lying. Don't lie and say you delivered and you ain't. Let me tell you, you just setting yourself up. Come on, somebody. This devil's trying to get folks out. I, I'm going to get there in a minute. Let me tell you, this devil's trying to get folks out of church so he can get them out with a knockout blow. Once he get you out, he going to knock you out. I don't, care how what your, I don't care how well your intentions are. I don't care how good they are. If you are out and God said, I'm done, he is just done with you. Let me tell you why God said he's done with some folks. You know why he said he's done with some folks? Because he sees the end from the beginning. He knows that they'll never change. God said, I'm done with you because I know your end. I'm not going to waste my time with your present because I know your end. You presently seeming like you want deliverance. But the end of you is going to go right back out on me again. That's why some folks don't believe God. God can't turn you over. But God knows your ending from your beginning. He knows where you're going to end up at. Y'all quiet here now. Uh, you might have the best intentions. I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to get it right. God said, but I see you. There's people sitting right in churches right now. Their minds is already wondering, what shall I do next? Already planning. Let me tell y'all, y'all better watch these schemes and plans that they were putting in people's minds. If it ain't God, you better rebuke it quickly. Y'all better hear me. Y'all come on, rebuke that thought. I'm telling you, I, I, I preach like this because I want you to stay in church. Because if you get out, if you get out, you know, I heard of some people, God saving them, and after he saved them, he'll right away kill them. Because he know they're in. If some folks have left the church and God right away killed them, because he know they ain't coming back. Why keep existing without me? Y'all got quiet here. Why live a life breathing my air? Huh? And you don't want to live for me. He already know. I'm not going to let you use that breath to breathe my air and you ain't going to live for me. Y'all quiet on me here. After, let me tell y'all, I'm going to tell you a more dangerous thing. To sit under this kind of preaching and go out there and leave God. 
I'm sorry to tell you, some folks ain't coming back in here. Some folks may make it back by the hair of their chinny chin chin, but some folks is not making it back because they're too they're too infected. God don't trust them, and God know their end. As for us that still got our right minds, put the blood over your mind. Oh, God, I feel that. Keep that, man, tell every day, God, I put the blood over my thinking, over my reasoning. God, help me to think right. When I start thinking crazy, put the blood. I rebuke that thought, loose your hold. I put the blood on it. Keep yourself covered. You don't know what you will do when you leave here. That's devil now, I'm telling you. He's fighting folks from coming to church now. I don't care how I preach. I don't care what I say. When that devil got a hold of people's minds, they might want to get free. But sometimes they could be so deep in debt to God so they don't have enough to even come back. Y'all hear me here? You better keep yourself in the house of God. You don't know what you're about to expose yourself to. We talk about the coronavirus. God might have something else out there that, that's even named yet. <laughs> better stay in the church. Look at somebody tell them, stay in the church. Stay in the church. No, you better hear me. You know, you can be in church and get out of church. Why are you in church? You know, you'd be surprised, man. The stuff people is thinking about doing while they're sitting here. Thinking about the plan. Y'all, clear your minds. Put the Let the blood be a token for you. You put it on your doorpost. Put it on your mind. Over your family. Because I won't, listen, God said I ain't concerned about nothing else but the blood. Because, to be honest with you, if to be honest with you, God wouldn't deal with us outside the blood. If it wasn't for the blood, we all down. If it wasn't for the blood, he couldn't even stand and look at you outside the blood. It was the blood that cleansed you, that purified you, that washed you. When he's out, when I look at the blood, I see you. And I cleanse. When you say, God, forgive me, I have to look at your blood, not your sins. Because if I looked at your sins, I'd damn you. But because you said, God, forgive me, I have to look at the blood to wash you with it. Y'all, the blood. Thank God for the blood. And that blood is the only thing that's going to preserve you in this hour. And so when we live holy and righteous before God, his blood protects us from dying from diseases and sickness that's killing everybody that don't have a covenant with God. You know, I, I thought about it today. We all, we, we live in a fallen world. We all get sick, right? We all die. The holy, the righteous, the unsaved, we get sick and we die. But God preserves us from this deadly stuff that everybody's dying from. Come on now. God, y'all, oh, come on. He preserves us from epidemics. Yo. He, he preserves his people. And if one died from it, you know what the church do? We pray so nobody else won't die from it. What do you mean, Pastor? James was beheaded by the sword. They wanted Peter next. They said, but no, we was, on, we was off our guard with James. But we get on our guard with Peter. And just imagine how many saints have died from this recently. Are we able to pray that no more die? Y'all got quiet. Can we pray not just for ourselves, but others in other countries and other states? Lord, don't let them take another, another one of us. Are y'all hearing me here? Because listen, before we knew it, a coronavirus came by and killed folks. Before they knew it, Harry came and killed James. But after they knew it, 
Now that you know, it's time to intercede for each other and for those that of us that is infected by it and pray for those that's bound in sin, that's bound by it, that they would repent. Are, are y'all hearing me here? Let's look at real quick. Let's look at, uh, we're going to do some traveling. Hope you got your Bibles okay. Deuteronomy 7 and 15. God said, I'll keep you from this stuff. How many believe that tonight? Amen. I'm going to find Deuteronomy 7 and 15. Minister Casey, 2 Peter 2 and 9. You got it? Okay. First Lady, Psalms 91 and 10. Sister Mariah, Psalms 125 and 2. Minister Geisha, Luke 21 and 18. All right. So I'm going to read Deuteronomy 7 and 15. I'm, I'm going to say this again. When we live holy and righteous before God, his blood protects us from dying from diseases and sickness. That's killing everybody that don't have a covenant with the blood of Jesus. Now listen to Deuteronomy 7 and 15. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of, of Egypt, which thou knowest, upon you. Y'all hear that? Everybody that's dying from these diseases in Egypt, I won't put it on you. Y'all be see so you gotta confess that. Regular flu, <laughs> corona flu, whatever flu, he would not put that up on me because I got a covenant with the blood. How many thank God for your covenant? My God, I ain't getting no flu. I ain't, I ain't getting no flu. Because he promised me he would not put it on me. Did y'all hear that? He promised. If I, if I get a symptom of it. Whoa, 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 whoa. I get a. <coughs> no, this didn't come from God. Because he told me he wouldn't put this on me. Take your sickness back, devil. Put the blood over my spirit, over my body, over my immune system. The blood is over my, my lungs. The blood is over my kidneys. Come on, somebody. You got to put the blood on your body. Because when I see the blood, these sicknesses and diseases won't touch you. He said, I can't give you a disease where the blood is covering that. Y'all come on here. Well, I see the blood. Listen, sickness and the blood don't match together. Sister Lynn, it ain't going to work. Come on, Sister Ben, it ain't going to work. Oh, y'all hear me? It is not going to work. I don't care what sickness you're dealing with today. He said, I will take it away from you. The blood shot I me. I don't care what your pain is in your body. I come to tell you, he can take it away from you. Do y'all believe that? I don't care what it is. You, I'm going to tell you something. You drench yourself enough with the blood every day. Something after a while. Something after a while I'm going to have to give, brother. Something I'm going to have to give. Because he promised me, when I see the blood, when I see it, when I see it, Pass by. You know something? A lot of us think we made it here this week without any kind of harm coming to us. You just don't know how many traps we escaped this week because of the blood. You'd be surprised how much you could have been in a death way and don't even know it. We could have been reading about you or me in a newspaper today. But the blood just said, I'm going to do it for me. They don't even know. I was riding down last week or two weeks ago. I was riding down the highway. Around about 65 miles per hour on the highway. So I merged over to my left lane. 
just kind of go around the car in front of me because they're going like they're in the school zone. <laughs> HOV lane had ended. And a man, oh, me, oh, man, pulled right in front of me. I'm going 65. He pulled right in front of me. I know it was nothing but the blood. And watch this. I was a hair away from hitting him. And out of impulse, I swerved over to my other lane without looking. To prevent from hitting him, I, I swerved swerve fastly to my right lane. And if something was coming 65 miles per hour, it would have killed me and everybody in that car. He just exited the HOV and just shoo, right in front of him. And I'm telling y'all, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. It's like I missed him by as thin as his paper. By as thin as that paper. Had somebody hit me after I swerved over, he would have hit me, I would have hit him, and so on. It would have been a death on Highway 75, but the blood. The blood. Something about that highway, boy, I've been on coming off a bridge. Right on the bridge and out of nowhere on my blind side, on my right side. Somebody just hit us. Bam! And I know it's the law because that car swerved again to the right. I had to get control of it because I didn't get control. Off we go. But the blood. Now those was incidents I knew about. But well, what about the stuff I don't know about? And you think we could come to church and I testify, not say nothing good about the Lord, ain't got in the press, because you don't know what he done? It's some stuff. Listen, why not praise him for the stuff that he done that you don't know about? Saints, listen, I thank God for being here. I thank him for protecting me from danger, seen and unseen. Yo! You don't know what burglar thought about Robbing you while you slept. You don't know who thought about jacking you, carjacking you. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know if you cut somebody off on the freeway and they thought about coming to shoot you. You just mind your own business to your church music, and you don't realize you cut some gangsters off, some crazy nuts, and they thought about shooting you, but but the blood made them made traffic build up. The blood made the traffic. The blood is a force that made the traffic. Traffic couldn't get to that blood force. And boy, before you know it, everything jammed up and they lost you. You don't know. But when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I mean, the airplanes I rode on, ain't no telling how many times the engine might have failed. But the blood covered the engine. Yo, you better keep that blood on you. How many thank God for the blood? Shot. That's why this life I can live. I don't live casually because I know it's danger out there. But I live furiously. I don't, I don't, I don't look at people crazy because I got the blood on me. Y'all crazy. Looking at folks like I want to kill them. No. I go about my business, but I know I got the blood on my life. Man, what's the next scripture? Who's next? Go ahead. Um, Second Peter two and nine. Two and nine. Uh huh. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust from until the day of the judgment. Look at that. I like it. He said he know how to, to deliver the godly out of temptation. That means trouble times. That means pressure times. God know how to deliver you out of... Um, listen, I got so much confidence in the blood. I could be around 30 folks with that virus. And God could deliver me. Y'all quiet. Preserve me from getting sick to death. You, you know some you, don't, you, you know what some of us could have had the flu in here you don't you don't even know it 
Be you touching doorknobs they touched? Y'all quiet. You, you, you don't know? But you got preserved. He know how to do what? Deliver the godly out of temptation. How many godly folks I got here? Well, you've been delivered from some stuff, baby. You've been some delivered. Now, thank God for delivering. Come on, can we give God the praise for delivering? <laughs> Psalms 91. Who got that? Who would I tell? You? Okay, I want you to start at verse 7 on down to 10. Uh-huh. Or actually go up to verse 5. Well, yeah. 5 down to 10. Y'all, listen. Don't be afraid like the world is by this terror by night. Listen, because some of this stuff seems like it comes overnight, don't it? Come on, go ahead. The arrow is stuff coming, hidden folks every day. Don't you be, don't be afraid of that stuff. Go ahead. The pestilence that walk in, all these diseases coming. See all this destruction and plagues. He said, don't be afraid of this stuff. Go ahead. Boy, look at that. A thousand going to fall at my side. Listen to this. Let me tell you something. All these folks dying, but not me. Come on. I, listen, I'm not, bad. I'm not boasting in my strength, but I'm boasting in the blood. Come on. <laughs> Come on, son. Long as he see the blood. They're going to die for it because they ain't got the blood. They're going to die from it. They're going to die from it when he see me. My question is, what are you going to see when he see your house? Everybody down the street dying from it. you the only one in your apartment complex living happy, strong. And you don't know what happened either. You don't know what, what's going on. Why are these news reporters outside? You, they ask you, you don't know what's going on? No. All these folks dying. And, and we and I feel bad that they're dying. I hate they're dying, and most of them dying without Christ. But what this is telling me is your end ain't gonna be like that. A thousand should fall by my side. That's a lot of folks. Ten thousand by my right hand, but what? <laughs> but do y'all believe this stuff? Do y'all believe it? I'm not saying we don't get sick, because we do. I ain't gonna I, I ain't gonna say pains don't come. I ain't gonna say we ain't gonna die, cause we all gotta die. But certain things I ain't dying from. Y'all got quiet here. Oh y'all hear me? Certain things I'm not dying from. If I'm gonna die, I ain't dying like that. Y'all quiet here now. Y'all better hear me. I ain't gonna die like that. Tell you somebody down like this. Get a flu, give me some chicken noodle soup, some crackers and orange juice, and give me some prayer. <laughs> Lots of all. You know, give me antibiotics, and I'm going to pray over it, and I'll be all right. But this would not decease me. <laughs> this is not. <laughs> Y'all believe it? I believe it, man. Because of the blood. Who's next? 125 and 2. Oh, you ain't done yet. Keep reading. I'm sorry. Only with your eyes. Go ahead. Listen, you have, hold on. You make the Lord your habitation. In other words, you live in him. We abide in him. His word abide in us. Because we're abiding him and we'll and he abide in us. We can ask what we will. And, and that's protection abiding in the most high, as we read in verse one. Right? That's protection when you're abiding in the most high. Shall abide under the shadow of his in other words, that's protection. Brothers and sisters, if if you're saving her and you're sold out to God. God has given you a protection plan. That's a part of your benefit package. Part of your benefit is protection. Oh, have you ever been in situations where you was afraid, but you know God is with you? 
It's just natural. And can I tell you something, brothers and sisters? To feel fear is not a sin. The Bible said, be not afraid of sudden fear. To feel it and to do it is two different things. I might feel fear, but I ain't acting in it. Come on, somebody. Sometimes you got to challenge your fears. Because sometimes faith is built after you challenge fear. You don't know what kind of confidence. Once you overcome that fear, wait a minute. Faith is built after you overcome fear. Because you'll be like, I was fearing this. And I overcame this. Oh, man, I didn't know I was on now. See, you know you got some confidence in the thing you feared. The thing you feared made you run from it. And you 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 never thought, you you never thought in your mind, I can I can overcome this because you always ran from it. But when you faced it, knees may be buckling. But I'm facing this. And after you faced it and won, you conquered a fear. Oh, y'all with me here. So to feel fear is not a sin, but to run in fear is. Oh, y'all hearing me here? That's why a lot of us are so fearful, because we run from stuff. The Bible said the wicked run it when no man pursue it. <laughs> they must have you, you run it. Come on, you just running from folk. No, face it. Amen. What's finished reading, first lady? Verse 10. Y'all believe this? No evil shall do what? And what else? Why should not it come now y'all dwelling? Because of the blood. My house is going to be a house of prayer. My house is going to be a house where I enjoy my food. I enjoy my family. I enjoy my rest. Yeah, come on, somebody. Name for the coming of my house? Y'all believe this? It is not. Ain't no virus. Coronavirus coming out my dwelling, nor neither new beginning. Not in this dwelling. And if it do come, we driving it out. Come on, somebody, so we got a chance. Come and get driven, driven out, or don't come at all. Psalms one twenty five and two. As the mountains, is it? Okay. Y'all hear that? The law is surrounding you. Y'all believe this? Y'all don't believe that. He's surrounding you. He's protecting you. While you at Walmart, Sister Linda. While you at Coles, First Lady. While you at the school, Minister Keisha. While you at the jailhouse, Minister Casey. While you at the food company, my brother. He's surrounding I'm surrounded. I'm surrounded. I'm surrounded today. When you leave this building tonight, you driving home. Just think about it. I'm surrounded. Why? Because the blood is covering me tonight. Next verse, Luke 21, 18. Luke 21, 18. Oh, come on now, sister. Come on with it now. Come on with it. You ain't got that yet? What? <laughs> Go ahead. Not one hair on your head gonna be touched. Y'all better hear that. Y'all hear me? Not one strand of your head. Not your weave now. Yeah, let's go get that corona. Not one on your head shall be touched. I ain't got no hair, Pastor. What about for those that ain't got no hair? With the hair you lost, I'm going to remember it. <laughs> you bald as Kojak. But 25 years ago, you had hair. So that hair you had 25 years ago, I'm going to remember that. <laughs> they cover you from it. Y'all quiet. Y'all ain't laughing. Some of y'all ain't laughing. Not one hair on my head. 
Brother, if I'm in the prison, not one hair of my shall be Because the blood covers me. I could be in the worst neighborhood in Dallas. I'm walking. And not one hair of my head would be touched. You know, I think like this. You might have been somewhere where folks wanted to get you. But they saw somebody with you that you didn't see. I ain't finna mess with him, man. That big old man, that big old dude with him could be an angel. They probably, God could open their eyes and see something you don't see. You surrounded with angels you don't even see. But God's, I, I will open a set of eyes to see what's with you. And they'll change their mind not to touch you because of what's around you. You'd be surprised. Boy, wait, 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 ain't no need roll like that. Let me get out the way. Come me going, going around. You never know who want to pull a gun on you. You don't know. But hallelujah. But because of who was with you. I let them see something like I did, like he did Elijah's servant. Lord, open his eyes. To see what he got around him. Chair is a fire all around. Show him I'm with him. And God opened that man's eyes to see. He looked at that window and saw all them chariots of fire. Boy, you surrounded. Y'all, let me tell you, y'all surrounded. If you a blood covenant believer, you are surrounded. I could walk down West Dallas Street right now. If I, I wouldn't try this because I want to tempt the Lord. But if my car broke down, I got to walk down the street. I'm walking in boldness. Y'all better hear me. Now, one hair of my, I believe that, brother. I just simply believe it. I walked through the valley in the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I want to know he, you, he with you, brother. He's with me. He's with you. He's with you. He's with you. You know, I believe the devil tried to kill some of us as children. But the blood. Yes. Try to take a lot of us out. I ate rat poison. My mama had to take me to the hospital. Rat poison. And that thing could have killed me. But God, I was a little baby that size right there. Rat poison. That didn't want me out of here, brother. But God spared me so many times. Car almost hit me. Stopped like in a, like a hair. Miss me by a hair. Drunk driver. Miss me by a hair. And you got stories too. Well, that devil could have took you out of here. But God said, I see where they going. <laughs> I see the ending from the beginning. They, they had a praying mama. They had a praying grandmama. A praying daddy or grandfather. That prayed for him. My God, I'm getting happy here. And because of the prayers of their grandparents or parents, the blood covered them. Woo, glory. When you're using your shenanigans, that bullet should have tore your head off. Should have blew you the kingdom come. But the blood. Shot up a house. Some folk were in it. You shouldn't have made it out of that. But the blood. Come on, that's so. Not one her. I believe it, brother. Not one her. Not one. Shall be. I want to encourage y'all tonight. I don't care what you're dealing with. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what how 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 um it looked like it's not working in your favor. How I look anti, I don't care what you did it with in your body. It's not going to touch one hair on your head. Oh, y'all hear me? I don't care what you feel like. It's not going to work. Look at spot, tell me it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. No weapon. Not one. Not a, not a one. I'm 
I'm, I'm wrapping it up. Listen, God is giving the world a small, a very small foretaste of what it will be like when the church is raptured up. People don't know what to do or where to go. I need somebody to find me. Brother Bill, Isaiah 24, verse 17 and 18. Sister Rosalind, Amos. So you the last one. You got time to find it. <laughs> Amos 5 and 19. All right. So we're going to start. I want y'all to listen to it. Isaiah, the world, listen, the world don't know what to do right now. But we as a church, we know what to do. But you look at the world, they panicking. They running to and fro, trying to hide. They feel like they know where to go. Isaiah 24, 17 to 18, brother. Listen, let's, let's read that real slow. Say it again. Fear, Fear and, the pit, and the pit and the snare. And the snare. Listen, listen. Fear, <laughs> the pit, and the, folks don't know what to do. They fearing the pit. They feel stuck. The snare is this disease going on. So they feel trapped. They don't know what to do. Go ahead. Oh, the earth. What's going to happen? Shall fall into the pit. In other words, they're going to run from the fear to the pit. Y'all hear me? They're trying to find. I'm going to get away from 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 uh, from Washington. I'm going to move to Seattle. They fall into the pit over there. I'm going to move to McKinney. Don't you bring that stuff over here. <laughs> Keep yourself out there. <laughs> so they're running from there to they, what they feel like it's not. Okay, it's a little bit easier over there. They fall into it. Y'all, let me tell y'all something. Don't be surprised if it hit the city. Y'all quiet. It's moving slowly. Why is it moving? Because they don't have no natural defense for it. Well, we do. Go ahead, brother. And he that cometh out from the midst of the pit. <laughs> you, know what? you know why they have no security? Because they don't got Christ. They going from the skillet to the frying pan to the boiling pan. Go ahead. Go ahead, brother. For the windows... Mm -hmm. And the foundations of the earth do shake. All right, Sister Rosalind, 5 and 19, Amos. All right. As, he, as, a, as, if a, as if a man did flee from a lion. This is what it's like. Listen to this. You think you're running from a lion. I got away. And then you, met, you came across a bear. A bear. <laughs> Come on, y'all. This, this is what's happening. Folks is running in vain without Christ. They're running from one problem to the next. You think a bird, a lion is bad enough. And a bird just swipe you. Yeah. Big old lazy something. He look lazy, but he fast too. <laughs> Man, he get up. You think you climb that tree? Big old. He get up there and find you? He got you with his paw? He got you with his maul. He'll maul your head. What do you want, the lion or the bird? No, if you had a choice, what you going to run to? I think I'll run toward the bird. How about y'all? Bird, bird. What about y'all, bird? I think I can at least kind of outrun the bird. All right. All right. Play dead, maybe he, because at least with the bird, I can play dead, right? A lion don't care if you playing dead or not. He gonna get you. Oh, you dead meat? Good. <laughs> he, he won't dead meat. Play dead. Oh, you gonna do that? You gonna be dead? So I am gonna take the brother. Go ahead, sis. Went into the house. Leaned his head on the wall and what? <laughs> so you know what that's telling me? Without Christ, there's nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. 
Where you gonna go? Nowhere to go. Are y'all listening to me in this room? Where are you gonna go in this hour without Christ? When you come, listen, y'all come to this church. Listen, I'll be the first one to testify if I was you. I'll be the first one to throw my hand up and say, Thank you, Jesus. Because I could have ran across that bird. I could have ran across that lion. I could have touched the wall and that serpent could have bit me. Are y'all hearing me? And it's almost like God giving them grace, but they're still in a bad place. Why? Because the lion is bad, then you went least to a bird, and least in a bird is a, is a serpent. They all dang, deadly, but least, I mean, you're going from great to bad to less bad, but they're all dangerous. So you're thinking, I'm, a, I'm getting away, and it's not as bad over here, <laughs> but it's bad. Let me get away from her. Let me go over there. It's not as bad here, but it's bad. <laughs> Poison. You die from all kinds of stuff. Keep the blood of your house. That's my keeping the blood of my house, Pastor. Now watch this. I, I read something today very briefly. I didn't, I didn't take a lot of time over this to read it. But the question is, did God send this? Is God sending this coronavirus? Or is it just, is it just we live in a fallen world? It's not a trick question, but you're going to ask. I'm, I'm going to show you a verse in a little bit, but yeah, what do you think? I, I believe it's lining up with the word, right. whether it was done or purposely, <laughs> yeah. or, you know, what is the rest. You know, yeah, right. I, I believe it's, it's, it's been sent out. All right. It's like that Ebola. Yeah. yeah. Yes, that's right. That's right. Yeah, well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But my my question is this: Is God doing this? Is it the devil? Hold on. Or is it man? Can I blame God for this? No. All these sicknesses and and okay. Can I blame the devil? Come on, y'all. Yeah, it's evil, of course. That's good, too. What if the Lord What if God said the devil ain't got nothing to do with this? <laughs> yeah. God rained down them plagues in it. Ten plagues, right? All right, let's look at this one. Deuteronomy 28. Let's just see what the Bible said about it. Because, you know, I've heard them folk, them fellas on, them, them fellas on TV, them, 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 them fellas on TV, say God don't put no sickness on people. God don't do that. God don't do that. God don't do this. God don't. But we want to we we ask the question. We want to find out the answer tonight to this question. Who's doing this? Is this the work of a man's hand? Is it the work of God's hand? Or do Satan, is he releasing his fury because he knew he had a short time? Right, it can, yeah, that's true. I mean, you know, all them locusts on the land, you would think man can exterminate them, didn't you? But, but God put them there. <laughs> so if it was from a man, they could have got rid of the locusts. Let's just see this real quick. I mean, we, you know, it's up for whatever. Deuteronomy 28. Yeah, let me get that real quick. I want to read this with you. Deut- Deuteronomy 28. Oh, God, thank you. 28 and 20. Don't read till you get. Don't, don't start reading till we all get there. Amen. Some of y'all hard headed. Not playing. It's playing. No. 
That's all right. Now, listen, y'all ready? 2820, the Lord shall do what? Sin. Sin. Upon you, cursing, vexation, uh-huh. and rebuking all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do until thou be destroyed and until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doing uh, of uh, whereby thou hast forsaken me. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee. Not the devil, not man, until he consume thee from off the land, whether thou goest to possess it. Now, this next verse sounds like the food of me. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption and with a fever, and with an inflammation, and with extreme burning, and with the sword, and with blasting, and with mildew, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. What if God doing this? Right, right. Right. That sounds like the flu to me, don't it? Y'all got quiet. And who, who sent it? When I see the blood. That's, and guess who the death? But, but guess who the death angel was? It was him. He said, when I see the blood, I will pass by. He said, when I, when I see it, but watch this, watch this. I sent the plagues. But when I see the blood, I pass by from you. Experiencing the plagues I sent. Don't be afraid. What? Yeah. Don't be afraid. They're gonna be released at his permission. Yep. He covered them. That's right. And he sent them. <laughs> and we just read here. He sent this stuff. But folks say what God won't do. God won't put this on you. He already did it. Now, I mean, it's up for this. I mean, for debate. Well, God is doing this flu. Well, it's the devil doing it. It's man. I just believe this. When it comes to God's people, God's in control of everything. <laughs> yeah, He still control it. He still working. Let me show you another one. Matthew twenty four. This is a pestilence, right? We're talking about right. Epi- epi- um, epidemics and all kinds of diseases and stuff. So we're gonna see. Is this God doing it? Is it Satan doing? Or is it the devil? I mean, is it man? Matthew 24. This is the last scripture. I'm done. Can y'all believe Pastor done already? What? Oh, man. Actually, look at verse 5. 24. Matthew 24. Verse 5. Y'all got it? The Bible says, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Now, now wait a minute. We, we got to discern what's coming from Christ and what's coming from Satan. Because many false prophets come in my name. God didn't send no false prophet. <laughs> Satan sent them. This is talking about Bible prophecy, end time prophecy. So who's working right here? The spirit of Antichrist. Look at verse 7. Look at verse 6. And you should hear wars and rumors of wars. Now who's doing this? Man. <laughs> verse 5, you see Satan working. Verse 6, man is fulfilling prophecy. Even though he's working in a man in verse 6, it's still Satan is prompting, he's prompting man to say, I'm the Christ. Right. Verse 6, man is put, is getting together, not liking each other. Country's not wanting to get along, fighting over each, fighting over this and that. So here we go of wars. Right? Rumors of war. They talking about war. They're still talking about war right now. See that you be not troubled. Y'all don't be troubled, new beginning. For all these things must come to pass. In other words, you can't get away from this stuff. 
Saints, you live in here. You can't get away from it. For a nation shall do what? Rise against nation. Kingdom against king. It's happening. There shall be famines. Look at the word. Pestilence. Yep. Earthquakes and devils. Play. So, he said it's going to happen. So, if he said that even this coronavirus is a part of it. It's a pestilence. It's a part of Bible. I see you. It's a part of Bible prophecy. It's got to happen. Guess what else it got to do? Spread. Man can't do nothing about it until God put an end to it. But if it spread my way or your way, when I see. Go ahead, sister. Pestilence, it's, it's, it's diseases. It's, it's like it's diseases that spread around. It's killing people. Ep epidemic is something that spread. It's, it's, it's sent out, and it's like nation to nation, city to cities. It's spreading. It's, it's like it's killing people. Diseases that's killing people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 